Because of the memory model in C++ and the fact that you declare variables, you kind of get them as values, you can pass them by value, uh, there are some special methods that exist. And the, some of these methods are things that are provided for you. Uh, so when you create a class, there are things that are added in, even if you don't add them yourself. And it's pr important for you to know what those things are. So, to illustrate this, I'm going to create just a new class that we don't really care what it does. Um, I'll wind up. Okay, so let's do and include an IO stream. Let's also put a main in here just so that I can demonstrate things and play with them. So int argc care star Okay, I'm going to make my class foo. I'm going to remember my semicolon at the end of it. And some things will be public, some things will be private. If I were to just have a class like this, and let's go ahead just because I'm gonna put some values in here, int a and an int star b. That one's significant because most of the time when these special methods come into play, it's because you have things like pointers that are either they need to be initialized, they need to be cleaned up, or whatnot. Okay, so if I write a class like this, C++ automatically creates a few things for me that I didn't write. First off, if I declare a variable of type foo, there's actually a constructor that's invoked. It's the default constructor. And actually to help illustrate this, so the built-in types like int, double, and pointers uh, that are basically part of the C language, those don't get any initialization by default. So unless you put in code that gives them a value, they will be uninitialized, they will have garbage values in them, and that's a horrible source of bugs because you will get different behaviors every time you run your program. Things like the std string, well, that actually has its own default constructor, and so it will be created as a empty string. When you create a class, if you don't give it a default constructor, one is written for you. And that default constructor basically goes through and does default initialization for all of the member variables. And so if you don't create a default constructor, one is created for you. If you create some other form of, dis of constructor, so let's show that we can compile that. What if I create a different constructor and I'm going to just a is set to i. I'm putting the body in here in part just to illustrate things and I don't feel like going through the extra effort of defining them outside of the class. You'll note here, now we have an error. Okay. It turns out that because this is calling the default constructor, as soon as you provide another constructor, the default constructor is not provided for you. And so if I now still want to be able to do that default initialization, I have to create my own default constructor, say that a is zero, b is null pointer, uh, and s, We'll initialize to the empty string. 
And I should do something with B and S here just to be complete. Some things that will happen here. Null pointer is part of the C11 standard. So we'll have to add that flag in to get this to compile. But now it's happy. So now I can do this default construction because I have a I have created my own default constructor. So the default constructor is only provided if no other constructors are provided. If you have some other constructor in here, then you don't get the default one by default. I'm going to close this video here and we'll come back and talk about some of the other methods that are provided basically by default by C++ and how you can uh, add your own and when you need to.